scanning for audio. Right, hello and welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast. This time, talking more Torchwood. It's Torchwood Believe, which I thought was the beginning of a whole new series of box sets, but apparently it's a self-contained lovely special. Probably an experiment to see if, well, I'll explain in a moment, but if what they do today works. And boy oh boy, does it work. Now... Anyone who's been paying attention to the last 765 podcasts will know that I have a love-hate relationship with Torchwood. Really liked Series 1, saw that it had potential. Series 2, I adored, and then things went wrong. I don't like Children of Earth. I don't like Miracle Day. It's been well catalogued. Seriously, we can just let it go. Yeah? Now, as you can also possibly hear, this is a car cast. I have managed to rig up a microphone mount into my sun visor, which allows me to talk while I drive, keeping completely hands-free recording so that I can share my thoughts with you, my beloved and probably attractive listeners. Probably. It also allows me to ramble insanely. And, more importantly than all of that, it allows me to use my Dragon Dictate software to write my books as I drive to and from work. There was one day last week when I pulled in two and a half thousand words in one day, thanks to a traffic jam. That's not important. What is important right now is that I get to chat to you about Torchwood Believe. It's a three-episode set with some extras, so it sounds as though it's going to come in at probably three or four discs, haven't actually checked because I've been listening to the digital review version. Now, the one thing that I didn't know that this story possesses, apart from the fact that it's got a full cast and is set fantastically in the middle of Series 2, which means it's got your proper Torchwood crew. It's got your Tashikos, it's got your Owens, it's got your Gwens, your Jacks and your Yantos all still alive. I know, all alive, it's all going to be all right. And, just like listening to a classic Doctor Who set in a classic Doctor Who period, no one else is going to die. None of the characters are going to be written out. We're in safe territory, which means I can relax and enjoy the story. Which, given modern, new, spin-off, brand new Torchwood, you know the one. Aliens Amongst Us, Torchwood. With the new Gwen and or and all of those other characters. Well, you know, I'm always on edge when listening to those, which I suspect is what Russell T. Davis kind of had in mind. But enough about him. I'm pleased. Oh, and just for those people who like to place things perfectly in relation to a TV series, because I know we're out there, this is kind of the back end of Series 2 after Owen's become, well, dead. But still alive. In a kind of death becomes a don't damage the body kind of a way. So are we all clear on that? Toshiko has feelings towards Owen. She's not quite sure what those feelings are. Probably hatred, especially if this story's anything to go by. Again, I'll talk about that in a moment. And it's just brilliant. The fact that most of the cast wasn't even in the same room as each other, you can completely live with. Jack, at this point in the TV series, was prone to going off on his own, in a, not in a huff, but to do his own thing, which fits perfectly with the whole one person not being present thing in allowing them to record stuff. You you know what I mean. It's basically the same sort of setup as Tom Baker being recorded. So, we've got all of the cast from classic Torchwood 
all appearing on this one story. So if you're a classic Torchwood fan and you've not bothered partaking in this because, oh, I don't want to listen to new Torchwood. Oh, I don't want to listen to anything else. Oh, those individual stories are nice, but they haven't got everybody in them. Well, this has. You now have no excuse. Now, I'm going to say a word to you. A word that is not mentioned on any of the extras. A word that is not mentioned on any of the literature. And a word that this clearly... This story is clearly, clearly about. This has been written by someone who's been hanging around watching too many documentaries or too many other programmes and has thought, you know what, this needs to be tackled. It's Scientology. Yes, I've said it out loud because, let's face it, this story is about a religion that has financial dealings that does not have specific tax breaks in this country regarding itself being a religion but does in other countries and is being created by a sci-fi author who is now dead. The parallels between Scientology and the fictional pseudo-religion in this one that worships aliens yep um, well it's fairly fairly obvious to anyone. But obviously that's where it, the similarity ends, because in the Torchwood universe the aliens are real. And the existence of Thetans, well, obviously I've not given the religion enough money to know anything about whether they're real or not. You make it all the way to the top and discover that it's all been made up. But you're a better person for the journey, and for giving them all your cash. Again, another similarity with this. There's also the thing with Scientology, where you sit holding two tin cans that are wired to a rudimentary lie detector, and then you tell them all your stories, and you're being interviewed, audited, that's it. Well, there's actually a scene in this story where Yanto is audited. So, yes... If you want to draw parallels between Scientology and this one, fair enough. Also in this, the basic fundamental religion and faith in the f in flying saucers and things and aliens, well, it's not really that much of a faith, is it? Because in this version of the Doctor Who universe, this is pre-crack after all, the Daleks were in the sky. The only person who didn't notice was Donna Noble. The universe hasn't realigned itself, and everyone looked up and went, Yep, there are aliens, thanks very much. And Torchwood is one of the worst kept secrets in all of Cardiff. Bloody Torchwood, you see? So, your basic storyline is, Owen has been intercepting some information about this pseudo-religion, and this pseudo-religion people, rather nicely, have been invading places like unit storage facilities in order to get kit. They believe in flying saucers. But you know what? If you've got proof, it's not really faith, is it? It's just a fact. Well, I suppose there's a nice grey area and that's where this belongs. There's some lovely body horror moments in this, but I warn you, they always say that Torchwood has adult themes. Well, this one specifically has an adult scene or a few scenes together that made me feel massively uncomfortable. I was almost glad that I was listening to this while I was at work on my headphones because, well, it was awful. I mean, it was gratuitously well-written, fabulously constructed, beautifully acted, and it made me feel so uncomfortable and believable. It was just awful. It was the sort of thing that people would be talking about for a long time and if you listen to this, you'll know. Toshiko just manages to pull off a brilliant... Nakamori, sorry. Nakamori playing Toshiko. Pulls off a brilliant performance in the scenes. And it's with Arthur Darville. I know, Arthur Darville. I didn't know it was him at all, all the way through. And then I hear the extras at the end, and I go, of course. The performances in this are exemplary. If some of them aren't in the room as each other, you just can't tell. That's how good the direction is. That's how good the writing is. Yes, these people have become successful, many much more successful than others, but we don't care. What we care about is that they all love Torchwood and they've all come back. So if, by any stretch of the imagination, you liked Torchwood even a little bit, this is for you. And with that, I'll let you listen to the trailer and decide for yourself. Because I, for one would like more of this 
more of the sort of torture I for one would like more of this more of the sort of torture where I know the central characters won't be killed off which always upset me with Torchwood and I know that's the whole point of Torchwood I really do get it but oh I'm just old fashioned enough to want stories rather than too much potential death I liked this team I liked this crew and I want more stories from them yes you won't be able to have as much character development because it's got to fit firmly in place but you know what writers are clever enough to work around that you are? Anyone listening to this, any of you nice people at Big Finish who happen to listen to these reviews, I have faith in your ability to give character development to stories that fit in a nice gap. We know you, we trust you, we really do. Just don't kill too many people, yeah? Anyway, I'm going to bid you farewell and let you listen to that trailer. So until next time, be seeing you. Coming soon from Big Finish Productions, Torchwood. Believe. 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 This is my message to the world. The stars are waiting. They think that mankind is at a dead end here on Earth, and that we should leave it all behind. Go away. Just go away. My name is Gwen Cooper. I'm here to help. You're such an idiot. Every step of the way you've made it worse. Look at what we've done here. They've been listening for years and watching and waiting. We need to look into this. I'm from out there. I've seen the future they're talking about, lived it. Don't give up on this. That's what they're stealing from these people. Lives. Do you think you deserve the stars? I just... Everyone has their secrets, don't they? The universe provides. The universe is home. We are made from stars. And stars return. I am the future! Praise Captain Jack Harkness. Big finish. We love stories. You're Torchwood! Oh, that's a secret. Yes, yes, we are. 2018 brings with it three brilliant conventions, all held at the Derby Quad. ShadowCon 2, the UFO convention, will be on June the 30th, 2018. Hooverville, the best little Doctor Who convention in the world, is on Saturday the 1st of September, while Big Finish Day is on the 3rd of November 2018. All tickets are available from the Derby Quad website. That was the Doctor Who Tin Dog Podcast, available on iTunes, YouTube, Twitter, RSS, Vimeo, and across the internet. Doctor Who and its associated properties are all copyright and trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Why not become a supporter by visiting patreon.com slash tin dog. Contact the show on tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. <laughs>